Hey there everyone, I'm back from ReaperCon 2015 and here's my little review of it. This is actually the second review because I recorded all the videos then found out my mute button was on. Joy, joy, joy. But, <laughs> I'll do this over again. So, ReaperCon 2015, any of you don't know Reaper you probably haven't subscribed to my channel at all. You have no idea what a mini is. <laughs> but it was a fun time. I got to meet a lot of people that were on the Reaper forums. And you know, there were a lot of people that weren't on the forums. So it was really fun. It was April 28th to May 2nd, somewhere in there. Wednesday, well, well Thursday to a Sunday. So it was nice getting to put faces to names and names to forum names. Uh, so real good. Glad to have it. I know a lot of people talk that this is a very friendly convention. It's very family-like. I don't know that I would call anybody my brother or sister or cousin, maybe third cousins twice removed somewhere in there, but yeah, nobody that I would say if they're going again, I'm not going. So, you know, really fun. If you ever think you might want to go, lots of fun to be had. I'm going to have to chop this up into several videos. It was 45 minutes long the first time, and I hadn't even done everything I said I was going to do. So, let me just jump in with my entries. I did Mr. Tiamat, and put him in the ordinance category and he got a certificate of merit you know, so I got a nice little paper certificate for him yeah. yeah I could weather him a lot more could edge highlight do some more details but if you watched my videos we were just going to something look pretty on the table so I did that it's worth a piece of paper then my competition entry which was put up on the video and you can see it little rotating around and it survived everything except me handling it I broke the missile pod off trying to put it back in its container on the trip home but I've glued it back and it got a certificate of merit and I do understand why after talking to lots well I didn't talk to the judges at all I was they were swamped and it's like eh, I'll skip this I have other things to do but uh, Dioramas really need to tell a story. And what's the story here? There's a pile of junk. This is terrain. This isn't a diorama. But, you know, okay, live and learn. I entered something. This was my entry competition. This is actually a white that I got from the CAV Kickstarter. And it had two left arms. And so I pulled it, decided it was junk anyway. I had the other one replaced. So, if it's junk, I'll turn it into junk. I tried doing tumbleweeds, but that just, I couldn't find any tumbleweeds. This is just some, I think, field heather from Michaels. And you can see I put little steampunk dust, is what it was called, in the beading section. So beads, jewelry making, whatever. I found it had lots of little gears and things like that, so I thought that was cool. So that's what I got. And it got a piece of paper. So they did ordinance first, and I was actually the very first person to get their certificate. Then they did dioramas. Can't remember if they did open not next or not. But I went ahead and all right, I put my well of chaos in for painters. So you know, well, I'm sitting there going, crap, I've got three pieces of paper to go home with. I got a bronze. <laughs> I was not expecting that. There is no weathering. You know, I'm proud of the eyes, but that's nothing special. There's no, you know, I did straight metallics. I didn't try to play with any of that. So the only thing I can think of that really sold it, sold it was that water effect in there. That, you know, it's just a little tiny. It's not even a conversion, but it sells the chaos and... So she goes back into the display cabinet with her medal. So, you know, 
I'm kind of okay with that, I guess. You know, better than nothing. Now, looking at all the entries after I put mine in, and I thank Caitlin for breaking the camera. She'll understand. She probably won't watch this anyway. Don't worry about it. Inside joke. But uh, after walking around, looking at all the entries, and oh my god, I call myself a hack painter as a joke, but it's really true. These entries were beautiful. Um, you know, I've seen stuff in in uh, game store cases. No, the, these were beautiful pieces of art. These were not gaming figures. So I'm going to try to pull up some of the pictures that were posted. Uh, each entry got a picture taken of it while they went through the registration line. And they were showing it on a rotating basis in the middle of the banquet hall. It wouldn't have a banquet. Middle of the convention hall. So they've got pictures of everything. I'm going to try to pull up some of my favorites and talk over it. That's why these videos be longer than 45 minutes. So I'm going to try to break it up into 20 minute videos or so. So we'll see how that goes. But I'll cut here and hopefully show videos. This is Wistlock by Martin Jones. I saw this one after putting in my entries and was just floored. Wanted to snap my brushes into and just give up. It, it was a beautiful piece. I voted this best in show. It did not win, but I was blown away from it, and I wish you guys could see it because the pictures just don't do it justice. But beautiful, beautiful piece. This is the level I'd like to get to. One nice thing is that I finally saw it and finally put the name when the person together, and oh, this is one of Reaper's painters. And, well, I don't know if he's specifically painter, but okay this is a professional painter this is not some guy doing this as a hobby well I may caveat 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 but it made me feel better that I wasn't painting to this level yet very happy with that so nice piece I loved it this is Wizard of Oz painted again by Martin Jones it got a silver award in the diorama and I just really liked the the two-part effect of it being black and white on one side, color on the other, just like in the movie. And I didn't get a picture in here, but there are two little witch feet on the other side of this door that got smashed by the house, and I thought that was pretty cool. This one is Cleansing of the Shrine by Greg Zuniga. It's a really cool little thing. I liked all the bamboo. Uh, my wife's Japanese, so I kind of got the shot for her. And cool little piece, and I enjoyed it. And if you notice the bottom of the robes of the uh, ninja or samurai, whatever, they're dusty. That's important. That came up in the uh, weathering class. Anyway, I just wanted to point this out. I love this piece too. This piece is Pegasus by Richard McAllister. And I did not pick it solely because it was a Pegasus. I really thought the horse's n muzzle was just absolutely gorgeous. This did only get a bronze. I felt it was worth a little bit more. You know, maybe the wingtips could have been done better. It needed a base, maybe, but it was still, I was blown away by how good a horse this actually looked like. This is Last Stand of the Swiss Guard by Jimmy Lloyd. And this was a, an amusing one just to look at. It's a bunch of space marine, or space mice, not space marine mice, that's a different one, but a uh, bunch of little space mice protecting the Swiss cheese and uh, you know one thing I noted is that it wasn't Swiss cheese that's Swiss cheese has holes in it but you know maybe it's not supposed to be Swiss cheese I don't know but anyway this was just an amusing entry and I enjoyed it classes I'm just going through the guide here go through my classes here first up I took uh, Bobby Jackson's computing, computer sculpting with ZBrush. And, you know, ZBrush is now his go-to sculpting tool. And it was interesting to hear him talk because so much of what he was giving tips and hints on how to really sculpt well, either in, you know, epoxy putty, clay, or a computer, really kind of meshed with 
design engineering anyway. So it was a very interesting class and I was amused by all that. My next one I took was with Julie Guthrie for creating your own tree. And I actually have my little tree here. And it's picture frame wire and it's cut and held together with some pipe cleaner and then this is actually spider webbing that's wrapped around it and it's all kind of meshed together with modeling paste and I ran out of modeling paste and didn't feel like I really had to keep going and it's a good thing too because I had to squish this to get into my suitcase and if I had had the modeling paste all over it, it would have just shattered. And so I'm very happy I didn't do that. But this was a really cool class, and I look forward to, you know, maybe making some just for Halloween, just table decorations or something like that. So that was kind of cool. I next took Aaron Lovejoy's airbrush detailing. Um, not a lot to say there. He showed lots of tips and tricks, and it's unique to airbrushing and if you want information on how to airbrush you know, look it up it was interesting to watch it actually happen and that was the benefit of the class the next class I took was it up here was weathering techniques with uh, Justin McCoy secret weapon miniatures uh, again that was fun uh, if I already took it upstairs and I did the same thing in the previous take of this video. My weathering on the competition entry really wasn't that great. Um, if you look back, I tried to doing zinc, zinc chromate primer on it, which is green primer that's on a lot of aircraft, spacecraft, and it just didn't work well. Plus my colors were all off, my weathering was bad took the weathering class I have a little bit better understanding of what I did wrong in the weathering uh, you know two big things that I pulled out that I want to share was uh, he used a white watercolor pencil and just ran it along the edge and I have like a base here so he just kinda well he didn't do that he just brushed it once along the edge it was dry and it kinda gave a chipped white appearance to that edge he was doing a half track army truck and so you know that was a really quick way to weather something but what I was getting back to the uh, salt I, if you don't know what that method is you paint a base color throw salt on it I used Elmer's glue a lot of people say they use hairspray he didn't recommend hairspray because well except he used it anyway um, I think it was for an acrylic thing, but over enamel or you know spray primer, it works well with just water, and he did it with just water. Plus, he was saying the easy part is is if it's enamel paint, you can just wash the salt off, and you don't have to worry about the paint underneath it. So I was using coarse grain salt. He was using fine grain salt, and he recommended that because if you need a bigger patch of corrosion, just put more salt on. So that was very interesting. The next class after that was uh, with Marique Raymer. I'm probably hacking her name. I keep trying to call her Mary Kay. But she did freehand. And here's the miniature that we did with freehand. And here's the cloak. Yeah, this little freehand thing was supposed to be all up the cloak but I didn't realize that till I was way into it and we were already doing other things so it just I ignored it um, the little dots in between everything is supposed to be visual clutter the little curly cubes dots slashes that sort of thing and her emphasis was that if you do that all over you know, do these little symbols then do the visual clutter you don't have to get these basic symbols, the, the main focus, correct. And I don't have any example of her work to show you. I already would. But she did this, and you can look, and when you know what to look for, you can say, yeah, th this one over here is a lot smaller than this one over here, but you know, overall the effect works. 
what everybody really got out of this class was the blending. If you can see the blending on this cloak, that took about two minutes to do. And that's kind of a lie. I want to say it took like 10 seconds. You know, we put the base midtone on, put the shadow on, and she used, recommended a cheap nylon brush because it's stiffer and it will hold its shape better. And you dip it into the one color, wipe off the tip, dip that into the second color. And then you line that up on the mini and just yep, wipe it. And you get a blend. And everybody said that that was probably the, the best tip they got. You know, not even counting the freehand at that point. So that was kind of an interesting thing. But uh, anyway, she showed us how to do freehand designs, full cloak. So, you know, that's kind of cool. It's not the freehand I was thinking it would be because I want, like, you know, freehanding you know, hazard stripes on a calf. But that works anyway. And then she went and did sheer fabric on this figure. And as you can tell, I have no paint on this. We ran out of time to actually do it. So it turned into a demonstration rather than a hands-on thing. And I'm missing one. Nope, nope. Next class I took was painting textures. And here's the figure we used for it. The first thing we did was do that axe. And if it'll come into focus, there we go. Uh, you know, a bright color, a dark color, and you know, we just kind of I don't remember exactly what we did, but I think we want we would kind of blended it and just did a little quick thing and and then I went in and put the little tick marks of the silver later. It doesn't look that bad. Then his big focus was on leather. And so you know, base coat, then little black lines, followed by white lines, followed by you know light leather, by dark leather, and just back and forth and I'm not too happy with the way the back came out, but I do like the front. It's, it looks like it's got like three big scratches on it, so you know I'm happy with that. Then the third thing we did was textured fabric, and this is supposed to be a red shirt, and it's just lots of little lines all the way across, and you can do up and down vertical ones too. I did this a little bit too thick lines and too heavy. You know, the one he showed us, it was very faint lines and so, you know, but cool class anyway. The final class I took was with Jeffrey Bowden painting small details. This is the class that caused me the most grief. Here's the figure we were doing. And it's hard to focus because it's so white here. There we go. There are supposed to be seven belt buckles on her front. I could see one. The guy behind me was a model railroader. He was here for uh, to learn how to paint human figures. He'd heard that ReaperCon was a good thing way to do that. So he was here taking classes both of us could not see those belt buckles and Jeffrey just went off and oh you just paint a square around it and then another square uh, I'd really wished he'd started with like a big ogre belt buckle or you know woodblock or something so we could learn to see what he was trying to do with a, a huge big brush at first you know, you know I'd, I'd really want to paint you know not this figure, but you know, a huge figure. You know, here's how you make around that belt buckle. But you know, that's the way it goes. It's painting small details. It's not painting large details. So I just guess I have to just live with that. So that really is about it for the classes. Now, one thing I did do, I did learn, and I'm now a convert for, is my ceramic tile. This is what I normally use as a paint palette. At the convention, they provided all the paints, and they provided styrofoam plates and paper towels. I, if you've watched my videos, I don't like wiping my brush off with a paper towel. In theory, it's got lots of fibers. 
I like using coffee filters. I'm still on the coffee filters, but the wet pellets that we made was a you know styrofoam plate, a very wet paper towel on top, and then Reynolds genuine parchment paper on top of that. And you know, everybody was using it, so okay, I'll just go ahead and go with the flow. And I could paint two hours with the same two drops of paint. And that right there, I immediately see the utility of it. For these painting videos, I only paint five, ten minutes at a time anyway, and then I have to wait for everything to render and such, such and so on. So I might not do it on camera, but when I'm painting for fun, I'm going to be doing a wet palette, I think. And I don't think I can use the ceramic plate with the white with the paper towel on it, so I may be buying a bunch of little styrofoam plates. Just letting you know, and I may talk about it, I may do it online. I don't think so though. Anyway, so that's it for classes.